Hi, thank you all for coming and thank you for having us. This has been delightful to hear everyone read. Um, my name is Paisley Rechtal. I'm the Poet Laureate of Utah and um, I'm gonna present a little bit, just a, really just a snippet of a project that I created. Uh, I was commissioned to write a poem for the 150th anniversary or celebration of the transcontinental. And I ended up writing a book length poem and it's a multimedia thing. Uh, you're gonna see a little bit of it. I'm gonna perform a little bit of it. There's a couple of things non-Utahns, Utards, <laughs> as we would call ourselves, uh, we need to know. Robert Smithson, maybe some of you know the famous land artist, Robert Smithson. He designed the Spiral Jetty, one of the greatest um, land art works uh, in America in the Great Salt Lake, but he deliberately chose it because of its pr proximity to Promontory where the two railroads met as a kind of commentary. And Brigham Young was the Mormon that brought the Mormons, the LDS, uh, into the valley. It was not Joseph Smith, just in case that's a question for anyone. Why would it be? Probably not. Um, uh, before we hit play, I don't know, maybe it's better to dim the lights for their viewing pleasure. I'm totally cool with that so that they can see everything. Perfect. Yep, that's perfect, thank you. Stui a dot at a benanita. Tendal for take a singum. Then he must be pivoted to train my knees. Stay track, quite a curus. Pucavaleva, what I start. This is the sound of a train, no podem. Mamma de no, a carisier like Sobiton, Tendal for a singum, Pinan, a pass it. This is the sound of a train. No viajamos en el tren. We do not ride on the railroad. The railroad rides on the train. Ok ho chun man sat ho oi. Tiêu quân ho yat guo si hui. Mo lang ming mok pang soi so. Yao sat ying zi fui chi loi. Chin gu ham sao chin gu han. Si hang hong doi mong hang toi. Me chao jong zi mai yang tao. Zi yi hong sam si bet fui. Sorrowful news. Sorrowful news, sings a telegram, 
and Lincoln's body slides from DC to Springfield, his infant son, Willie, boxed beside him. Buffalo, Cleveland, Painesville, Ashtabula, two coffins, 1,700 miles, 14 days on 14 railroads. One day, a great line will unite us, the president promised. Father and son displayed capital after capital. Louisville, New Albany, Baltimore, Chicago, the black train's beach upon a tide of roses. Can you believe still in the promise of this union? I saw, General Dodge wrote, a little Negro drop on his knees and offer prayers. While above, the dark news thrums on wires, gone, 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 across poles tall as the ones from which the president ordered 38 Sioux to be hung. Pass. Brigham Young hoped passing trades would enliven trade, while Congress hoped trade would pass polygamy from existence. Stanford didn't think the Chinese could pass muster, then use them to pass up the Irish, after which he wanted Chinese out, passed over by law to keep them from passing for white. The work passed to Japanese, who were put in camps, then on to Mexicans, Navajo, Italians, Poles, Greeks, Swedes, each man passed into and out of some approximation of American. We cannot help but be benefited by it, wrote Brigham Young. A bond paid down per mile of track. Congress had to pass an act to make the building stop. It's in the past, but once these barons didn't plan to meet, they planned to win. Each side built right on past each other. Body. A carload passed last night, their bones returned in barrels marked pickles. Thick as bees, ants, locusts, celestials lay siege to nature in her strongest citadel. Their genius is imitation. Show them once to do a thing and their education is complete. Wherever you put them, you'll find them good. They can withstand freezing, hunger, thirst, and heat. They're simple, narrow, but not dull minds running in old grooves. Congealed quantities, crystals of social substance. Unicated as boys or sodomites, they breed defunct in the heat of germs. They can be shipped to shore in great quantities. Even their clothes come identical, studded with rivets. Have knowledge. From an immigration questionnaire given to Chinese claiming to be former US residents or for Chinese entering the country during the Chinese Exclusion Act. Have you ridden in a streetcar? Can you describe the taste of bread? Where are the Joss houses located in the city? Do Jackson Street and DuPont run in a circle or a line? What is the fruit your mother ate before she bore you? And how many letters a year do you receive from your father? Of which material is your ancestral hall now built? How many water buffalo does your uncle own? Do you love him? Do you hate her? What kind of birds sang at your parents' wedding? What are the birth dates of each of your cousins? Did your brother die from starvation, work, or murder? Do you know the price of tea here? Have you ever touched a stranger's face as he slept? Did it snow the year you first wintered in our desert? How much weight is a bucket and a hammer? Which store is opposite your grandmother's? Did you sleep with that man for money? Did you sleep with that man for love? Name the color and number of all your mother's dresses, now your village's rivers. What diseases of the heart do you carry? What country do you see when you think of your children? Does your sister ever write? In which direction does her front door face? How many steps did you take when you finally left her? How far did you walk before you looked back? Journey, Robert Smithson on A.J. Russell's photo of the transcontinental. This excessiveness of men spilling, crowding to mark their X of time and money, I find lamentable. The little monument composed of paper and light, alienated spike, relic, 
in the hands of those willing themselves be relics too. Nothing so linear as human ego and desire, while the past turns and returns, spirals, like these pelicans journeying over the red waters off Roselle, streams of purple sodia, sodium, yucca rhymed with pustules of dust. Each one lifts, rises, finds what only some part of the cells remembers, nests in the wreck of what we've left, this bulk of ruined train, its wheel wells turn the rust of flaking blood. Of course, they trekked the human bodies from the crash back out. We care for our own. We care nothing for our own, making our lives material so as to free us all better to forget. Who remembers the names behind that photo's grasping fingers? And who recalls the dead DUP ferried from its crash? The medals they left, not as memorial to them, but because it cost less to leave the evidence than drag it all back out. Hold sorrow. Imagine a farm, a famine. Your mother promised you'll learn tailoring. Imagine your father pocketing $600. Now here's the boat, its black planks wet with fog. Here is the room holding a bed, no mirror, your wash basin. You have one window wired to face the street. He will keep his pants on, his greasy shirt, his shoes. Imagine the quarter pressed after into your palm. Your street will be named for presidents you never heard of, the city's lights like strings of blood in puddles. Imagine if you could, you'd carve your father's name on a knife tip. At night, only the train cries. Your door locks from the outside. Miss Home. Ways to die, blasting accident, derailment, boiler crack, crushed between trains crossing in the night, electrocution, bad food, heart attack. You can work yourself to death, a la John, a la Henry, or you can stay at home and die anyway, fist and noose, club, gun, knife in the back, gossip, sharecropping, bottle of rum with gas-soaked rag. What is freedom but the power to choose where you won't die. What is a train but the self once yoked to terror loosed into a force that glides on heat and steam? You're so far from Mississippi, the UP boss said when we hit Hot Rock Springs. Don't you miss your home? Miss home, I told him. I'm hoping to miss it entirely. Well, they catch on here and they go to mountain. Up on the mountains of high. Yeah, boy. Last words I heard that poor boy say. Give me a fool, says the water, fly down. Give me a fool, says the water, fly down. Give me a cool, big old water, fly down. Give me a cool, big old water, fly down. Give me a cool, big old water, fly down. Give me a cool, big old water, fly down. Give me a cool, Soil, letter from Brigham Young to General Dodge, Union Pacific, 1869. The locusts hum at first was like a line of flame. Then the air burst into reds, silver edged and filled with mouths like snapping scissors. They ate our wheat, blacked out the skies until the falling bodies settled like a fog over Great Salt Lake, the carcasses brined to a black and growing wall. We thought the soil here was rich, but who knew how rare rich was, how terribly fragile, and how temperamental we'd become trying to sustain these plots too alkaline to keep a crop alive. 
nothing natural but made in the beauty of this place. To create a home, we imported trees and water. We slashed and burned to excavate a state where nothing lived, nothing ruled us. And yet in all this nothing, we were subject to the rules nothingness demanded and allowed, which requires every drop of blood from our bodies, all that we might plant and tend and love, that demands all might still be taken from us and fed to the abyss, not the faith on which I believe each soul is nourished. Nothing natural here but need. Our symbol, as you know, is the hive of bees. And yet in our strength of will, our number, perhaps our enemies might picture us like the locust, which arrives and waves to feed without satiety, which visits more regularly than rain and covers the earth, not out of spite, but because they will survive. Dear General, all this we have endured. And now you think we should not remind you of the debt we're owed, we, who lobbied for this railroad, who agreed to unite this nation with you and bring the riches of the East West to tame its wilds? Do you wonder at our anger and our exigence? General, we worked your grading to monument point, in thousands drilled and blasted, rent the very foundations of the earth until these hills swarmed with our fresh encampments. We are patient, but we aren't fools. If we'd been a collection of mere individuals linked by money, Long ago, you'd have seen us crushed by weather, luck, and the Indian. Together, in faith, we have brought this place to heal. We can do more. Even the locusts, which once again have come to plague us, make little dent in our labors. Their dark trails that waver in the heat like iron bars are merely a mirage. Our kerchiefs dipped in camphor smell, not like sweat and earth, but sweet water. They do not stifle nor blind us to the promise of the money your company offered, a promise which is gone now too many months unanswered. We are hungry for an answer, sir. We wait for your reply. Each morning, your railroad tunnel shakes with the reports of our artillery. You can hear them if you listen. The mountains reverberate from base to summit, bringing back our volleys with thunderous echoes, as if in anger. Earth, 1862 Railroad Act, Section 2, an erasure. That the right of way through public lands granted to said company for the construction of railroads and telegraph, right, power, authority, hereby given to said company to take adjacent to the line road, earth, stone, timber, Said right of way is granted to the extent the United States shall extinguish all lands falling and required for the said, with the welfare of the said, falling required for the said, Indians the said, grants herein made. Not ash. Not gone, but changed. Not a body erased or born of grief alone, but praise. This country made us grow each another soul, not one for earth or heaven only, but nation, electric, dangerous as a third rail. We, the middle kingdom between white and its opposites, its thousand shades of fissure, our existence would compose into a fantasy of whole. Our bodies built more than a railroad. On my 1919 map, red, black, and yellow veins trace rails lengthwise across the states, the fragile paper splitting at its seams. Like any machine, we translate the magnitude of human force to change. We're history. Not silent, not invisible, not a dream, not oil, they told me. The first trains ran on steam. We cannot count all the dead. This is the sound of a train. Δεν είμαστε επιβάτες στο τρένο εμείς. 
汽笛が聞こえてくるそれは私たちの思いとなり今までの明かりしえない人々の